Good afternoon everyone and welcome to your tracking inventory in Reckon Accounts webinar. My name is Vicky and I'll be hosting today's webinar. Today's session will run for approximately 45 minutes with 50 minutes of questions. Questions can be submitted at any time in the question box on the webinar's control panel. Our presenter today is Graham Meredith. Graham is the principal of Booker's Bookkeeping and is a chartered accountant with over 25 years accounting experience and accredited Reckon Accounts trainer since 2007. Graham is passionate about teaching and also enjoys the challenge of running his own businesses and providing practical solutions for his clients. Today Graham will be running the webinar Tracking Inventory in Reckon Accounts. During the webinar, Graham will show you how to enable inventory, create inventory items and set up units of measure. He will then generate a purchase order, receipt inventory without a bill, and then enter a bill for receipted inventory. Graham will then create group items and also build manufactured items from the existing inventory items in Reckon Accounts. And then Graham will finish with reviewing inventory reports, creating a sales order and adjusting inventory on hand. Without further ado, I'll just hand you over to Graham. Thank you very much, Vicky. Hi, everybody. I hope uh, things are good for you weather-wise today. I'm down in the Southern Highlands of New South Wales and we've, um, we've actually had the sun come out for the first time in a very, very long time. Now I am talking about tracking inventory and reckon accounts. Uh, now I do apologise if there's any problems with internet. We should be okay. Uh, and I just mentioned that because of course we get lots of rain, water in junction boxes and all those sort of things can be quite frustrating. Uh, some of you have listened to my previous webinars, so I just uh, will quickly go through this. As Vicky said, I'm a Reckon Accredited Partner. I'm actually a Chartered Accountant by trade, but teach Cert for Bookkeeping at TAFE and deliver all the Reckon Accounts training courses in North Sydney. Actually off to do one of those courses tomorrow. Uh, and then I'm also a registered BAS agent. Obviously, I always mention that what I'm what, in, what I'm showing you today is of a general nature uh, and does not specifically constitute advice thanks to our litigious ways these days. So if you're actually after specific circumstances, it is important you should consult with a professional advisor on that circumstance. So what are we covering today? Vicky uh, labelled off a few of those. We're going to enable inventory and reckon accounts because as you're probably aware, in Reckon Accounts, it's very um, interactive, so we can actually turn on and off certain modules or functionalities. We're going to create inventory items. We'll set up the units of measure in Reckon Accounts. We'll see how we can generate purchase orders and have that flow the whole way through. And also, we'll see how we receipt inventory without a bill, which is probably not so common these days, but in the good old days, we'd receive the inventory and the bill had often come a few days later. And then we'll see how we enter bills for receipted inventory. Um, obviously, that's more common because the invoices normally are strapped to the, uh, the inventory as it arrives, or we receive it by email at basically the same time, if not sometimes even before the inventory actually arrives. We're going to create group items. So I'll show you what that's about and how we build manufactured items from inventory items. So how we can actually assemble items. Uh, we'll review some inventory reports. We're going to actually do a stock adjustment. So see how we can do that if we did a stock take and creating sales orders as well. So I'm going to go through these items here before I actually go across to Reckon Accounts. And I am going to go through them fairly quickly because I will double check, but I'm pretty sure, and yes, I can confirm, this session is being recorded. So if I go too fast, do not fear, you can actually go to the Reckon Academy website and you can actually get a copy of this webinar and go through those items. Having said that, uh, you'd know that it's for an hour and I'm aiming to be done within 45 minutes. Uh, and so that's probably why I'm talking a little bit faster and moving a bit faster because obviously there's a lot to cover, but we will have room for or time for questions. So when we set up an inventory item, we're going to see we go to the setup info uh, where it actually will, we've got to set up the item and there's two sides to it really. There's the purchase side and the sales side or the selling side. 
So obviously one of the key parts is the description. We're going to enter a purchase description. Now the beauty is it's unlimited lines. We can just keep going on and on and on. Mind you, I always think probably the, you know, as they say, a picture is worth a thousand words, but less is more in this case. The less words, the better. Uh, and often, as you know, sometimes you want to say something succinctly and it can take a lot more than that. That'll also be used in the purchase orders, the purchase description. Um, we're going to see the units of measure set. And when I say units of measure, some of you would have been on my webinar the other day about units of measure. So you will get a second bite of the cherry of watching that process. But basically, units of measure allow us to set up a group of related measurements with our buy, sell and track. And what I mean by that is I could buy, say, Coca-Cola by the pallet. I sell it by the case in the box and I actually track it by the individual can. Uh, oil is another classic example. Buy it by the drum and sell it by the litre. We obviously have to enter the cost of the item and that is our buying price per unit. Now that will change over time as our cost changes. We can actually put in, it is a default cost, but we can override it and put in a cost if there is a new uh, price point for what we're purchasing. Also, the system works on weighted average cost, so it'll adjust the cost base based on what we've got in there. We can also have a reorder point, and by entering the reorder point, it means when the item reaches a minimum level, you're going to be reminded in the reminders window. Preferred supplier, you can put that in as well if you would like, and this will print in reorder and stock take reports, so know where you have to go. And we need the purchase tax code because it's important in reckon accounts we do have sales tax codes and purchase tax codes. So typically the most common we see here will be NCG if it's subject to GST or NCF if it's not subject to GST. And as I mentioned, it must be different to the sales tax code. We then got the inventory asset where we have to enter in the account for the inventory asset. That means what we call the inventory on our balance sheet. So it might be inventory on hand, it might simply be inventory, it might be stock. You can actually uh, change it to what you actually want it to be. And when the items are purchased, the value of those purchases will go against that asset code until the item's sold, which is funnily I now talk about COGS, cost of goods sold. And this is the account code for the cost of goods sold. And what I mean by that is when we actually sell the item, the value, that purchase value, which is our cost value, because obviously hopefully we sell it for more than what we purchased it for, but that purchase value will go against the asset code so it actually transfers the inventory out of the, um, out of the inventory asset because it's now left our warehouse. Sales description, we enter in here the standard sales description. We can still override it and adjust it in the invoice, but it is the default that comes up on the invoice. Now the other thing is when we put in our purchase description, when we hit the tab key and we'll see by default that description goes to sales in case it's the same. But again, we can still change it. It's only a default, so we can always override. And then we've got our selling price, which is the standard selling price of the item. And we can override uh, that when we're actually invoicing, so we can change it. And actually, as I've noted here, if the selling price, price is always different, just leave it as zero and just put in the amount you need at the respective time. Uh, the other thing is there are price level lists. There's a price level list with up to 200 different price levels you can have, so or price lists you can have. So the idea is if you've actually got like different grades of wholesalers or different grades of customers that are getting those grades are getting the same pricing and it might be 10% off or, or you know, wholesale plus 10, however it's done, you can actually set up those price lists. Now I'm not going to go through that today, but that is something to take into account because I've seen a lot of people that look up folders to find the pricing and then override rather than having those folders, so to speak, within the Reckon account system. We also have open stock balances. So here where we enter the reorder point, quantity on hand, the total value is going to be updated automatically as it calculates on the cost price. So we can actually, in other words, 
at 30 June last year, we decided to uh, start recording inventory in the system rather than just as a purchase. And we had 40 of a unit in stock. So I can actually start my open stop balance at 40. And if I say it costs $5 a unit, it will actually multiply the 40 by five and start that as the initial price point. Okay, and it will want to know the date that we started that effectively like a stock date. Okay, I'm then going to move on to inventory assembly. And as I mentioned, there's three sort of key items, or well, a couple of key items. One is the group item. What that does is it allows us to enter several items that we already have individually uh, and put the group them together at once when when um, preparing an invoice. So, but and it obviously, if we take three different items and we bundle it together, it will take the inventory out of those respective items when it's sold, and we'll see that. And we're going to create inventory assembly. And that's, of course, where we want to combine components or items into another new item. So instead of saying we create what we call a photographic shoot and um, we have rolls of film, we have the photo shoot, uh, other things, in this case it might be we build a chair. So we take legs, the top of the chair top, uh, any wheels, nuts, etc. All those go into one combined item. Um, and when we do that, the we actually have to do a build, as we will see, in the system, which means that we actually take the inventory out of the individual accounts and put it and create the new build. Sorry, went one step too far. I'm now going to move over to um, Reckon Accounts and what I believe is a lot of, I mean, if you're a bit unsure about um, what I was saying on some of those points, I'd like to think now over the next 40 odd minutes, you're going to understand more uh, as to what I've done. And certainly if not, there's the opportunity with that last 15 minutes to go, Graham, what on earth were you talking about? Or just you're not sure about something, we can recap on it. Okay. The first thing is I look on the system and I on this home page and I can see automatically that inventory is not here because in the top left corner, I'm not sure if you can see my mouse on webinars, but in the top left corner, so above sales orders and also above enter bills and pay bills, that's where the inventory icons go. So we're going to have to turn inventory on. How do I do that? I go to edit. I go down to preferences. And actually, I'm going to just make another small comment here. I go through a webinar where I just talk about all the personal preferences and all the company preferences. This is where if you think the program can do something, it's not doing it for you, 80% of the time it probably can and it'll be in the preferences how you can make that happen. So it's worth having time. I know we're all time poor these days, but it's worth spending some time looking at it. Okay. I'm going to go to items and inventory, no personal preferences, but I click on company and we see inventory and purchase orders are active. It's not ticked. So obviously the first thing I do is go click and I've now put on the inventory and purchase orders are active. And as I said in that top area that uh, where we've got suppliers, we're going to see some extra icons shortly. We'll make us shut the home page down and then when we open it up, voila, there it is. Now. Also, by the way, I am looking after the dog today and it is snoring in the background, so I hope you can't hear that, but if you do, I sincerely apologise. Still much less than apparently how bad I snore at night. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is units of measure. I'm going to enable units of measure and we are going to see that today. And as I said, I am running over it a lot faster, of course, so I apologise to those that have seen it before. I'm going to click OK tells me that it's going to close all the windows, but you might actually see over to the left, already there's a receive inventory and purchase orders and another icon just above that you can't see the wording, or the wording on. So we go OK, I click on the home page and voila, there's purchase orders, receive inventories and enter bills against inventory. So now the inventory section is actually turned on. So 
Now we're going to create an inventory part. Now you see over here items and services and it's like most things I oh, know that was invoice, I was trying to be smart. But if I go to list, we'll see the second item there is the item list as well. So obviously I got to the item list, but if I click on items and services, that takes me to the item list as well. Now if I look at all the types in this list, we've got some pretty good inventory, or sorry, not inventory, item types in here, but none of them are inventory. I'm going to go and create a new part, and it's going to be an inventory part. Now I can go control N. I could have gone down to item down here and gone up to new. But control N, control then N will do it. Control while well, that's pressed down and press N will get us to new. Or I could right click as well. And there in the short menu is new. So you'll see service. And if you do not have inventory on, inventory part and inventory assembly will not show. So I'm going to click on inventory part because we want to do a part. And obviously if we have inventory, we buy it in, it sits on the shelf and goes out. So we have a purchase and a sell side. I'm going to call this film. And I'm actually going to go down and in the description, I'm going to call it bromide, which is film. It cost me $25 a roll. I'm going to put in the tax code NCG, non capital with GST. It's going to go to the cost of goods sold account. I don't need a preferred supplier. The selling price is $50 a pop. Tax code is GST. And the account we go to is the sales account. Now I've done all of that, okay, which is great. But I also want to set up the units of measure. So I come up here, I drop down. There are no types of units of measure. So I click add new. Now I'm going to go through this fairly quickly because as I said I have done a separate webinar on this part. So if you're not sure about this you can actually pick up the units of measure webinar. So in this case it's on an each basis or account basis rather than weights or volumes. I'm actually going to do it based on an each. I come here to this stage and what I now do is I want a box. So I've already got box in the abbreviation box. In a box there's 24. And I want to create a new one, and you'll see I'm actually tabbing there, but now I'll tick, and I'm going to call it a six-pack. I'll give it the abbreviation, 6PK, and I put six over here. Now you'll see the dozen and a pair. I haven't ticked those, so they won't be used. And now what I do is I go next. It tells me how do I purchase it. I buy it by the box and I sell it by the individual unit, so by the each. I then go next, it's got count in each, so what I do is I go film, U-O-M, film, unit of measure. So that's what I've created is this new unit of measure. And I'm now going to click next and set up a new item. So, uh, sorry, just bear with me one sec. I just want to check I haven't missed anything. No. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move down and I'm going to create a poster board. And I'm going to go poster board one by one meter. And the idea of the poster board is going to be that we can actually put a photo on that poster board. Looking, looking absolutely lovely. Now I go down. Now here's an interesting trick. So I go poster, board, 2x5SQM, so 2 by 5 square metres. So what I'm saying is I buy 10 metres in square metre setup of poster board. We also have graphic supplies as our preferred supplier. Now you'll see when I tab and I've actually gone past, it's gone 2 by 5 but I don't sell it as 2 by 5 I sell it as 1 square metre, so 1 by 1 square metre. I sell that at $10, GST and sales. I'm actually going to come down to the inventory asset and I had 10 on hand at the start. So you'll see because I've put in an on hand amount, the total value of that's $50, 10 at $5 each. Now, if I put in today's date and then I go and do transactions prior to today, it won't take that inventory into account. So what I am going to do is go 30.06 
16. Now notice I didn't go 30 slash, I went 30, 06, 16. You can do that and in fact if I want in this month where March and I go 30, it knows it's the 3rd of 17. Okay, so just a little little tricks that help you along the way. Now, as I mentioned, I want a unit of measure, but I don't want film unit of measure. This time, I actually want to use area because I'm going to use square metres. Uh, and therefore, square metres, you'll see we've got feet, inches, yards, normally only in America these days, or well, I'm sure it's elsewhere. Two by five square metre is what we have. And the abbreviation is going to be two by five, which is actually 10 metres. I then go next, we buy it by the two by five and we sell it by the square metre. So now I go next and I'm going to call this one board UOM. I click on finish there and then I click on OK here and it takes me back to the list that we've got. And I see now we've got poster board and bromide. Sorry, got a bit carried away, I nearly went below. So we've got these two inventory parts now, which is quite handy. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to do a purchase order to purchase some inventory. So I'm going to go to the home page. By the way, another little trick, I normally go over these rivets, drop this down, this is called the icon bar, and I fill these up with extra icons. So if I'm doing a lot of purchase orders, click on purchase order. First time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go view, add create purchase orders to icon bar. So purchase order, OK. And now I've got a purchase order in that icon bar. The beauty is, if I go escape, now all I have to do is click on purchase order and up comes the purchase orders. So sorry to slightly digress, but it is handy to know all these little tricks as well. Now, I know that I buy it from Graphic Supplies. They're up in Brisbane. Um, the date I want for this is the 28th of the 1st of this, month, this year. I go through to items and I'm buying film. Now the description comes up bromide because that's what we had. The quantity is one, but you'll see the unit is box because we said when we purchase, we buy it by the box. So it's actually $600. Now $600, if you divide by 24, we'll come back to uh, our standard price point. So what we're going to do now is click save and close. And we've effectively, we can assume we've effectively sent that purchase order off to graphic supplies. And of course, these days we do it via email. Now, I have seen people do estimates and then create an invoice rather than convert an estimate to an invoice. And I mention this because similar, I have seen people do purchase orders and then enter the bill completely separate to the purchase order when it, when it arrives. But what we're going to assume right at the moment is that we've just received the inventory and we haven't received a bill. So I go to receive inventory, receive inventory without bill. I know it doesn't happen that often. And I type in graphic. When I go tab, it tells me that there's open purchase orders for graphic. And do we want to receive against one or more of these orders? So I'm going to click enter for the yes. And up it comes and shows us the outstanding purchase orders. We know it's purchase order one, so we click on that and go OK. And all of a sudden, if you look at it, without having to type the information in, all over, the purchase order information is now pre-filled into this bill. The date of this bill is the 28th of the 1st. Um, and you'll notice down here, received items, bill to follow. So it knows that's the case. I go save and close. If I go back to the item list, now we're going to notice that actually there's 24 items in the bromide line, in the film line, because we've just purchased it. And by the way, we've got 10 in the poster board line because we actually put that in as a starting point. Um, now I'm just going to show you, we could go to reports, 
inventory and here inventory status by item and that actually shows us the inventory items. So you'll see there's the 24 bromide and the 10 of the um, poster board or the 10 square metres. So um, we've now received the bill. So if I go to the home page, into bills against inventory, I can click on that. It does what supplier, so I type in GRA and up comes graphic. You'll see the 28th of the 1st, uh, I can actually click on that invoice and I go OK. And now it brings up that invoice, or that bill, sorry, and you'll see the bill received has now been ticked. Now I can actually go here and go like plus plus for 30th of the 1st, so it arrived two days later. I can put in the GS234 for the bill number and um, I've got the 660 and in fact if I look across the board everything else looks pretty smooth. So um, if for example say it came in at 675, $15 freight, I could actually now click on the expenses tab instead of the items and I could put freight and cartage and put that $15 in there. So the total of these two matches up to the amount of the bill. Um, so at this point, I go save and close. Since the transaction is linked to others, do you want to change it? The answer is yes, we do. So it's saying that bill without, sorry, the inventory received without a bill has now gone into a bill. Now, because we're going to do a few other little tricks, I'm going to create a new service item. So I'm going to click on the items. I'm going to go control N and I'm going to click on service. And I'm going to create this thing called photo shoot. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Um, so I come down here and I type photographic shoot. The amount of this is $120. It's got GST and it's sales and it's 120 plus G so I don't click amounts include tax but if I want it to be 120 including GST I could click that I could then change that to 120 but I'm going to change it back to the 120 because that's the amount. Now we also want to create a group item called photography session. So what I can do is click next. I drop down and there's one called group so I click on group. The name is going to be Photography Session. Um, and we come down and in description, I'm going to say the same. So what I actually do is I go Shift and hit the Tab key, go back, I go Control C for copy, tab twice down, Control V for paste. So I don't have to type it again. The, least, the less I have to do, the better I always think. I then tab down and into here where I type in film. I go to quantity and type in five because we need five rolls because bloody hopeless photographer. I go to photo shoot and I put one photo shoot in there. So that's what's created for a photography session. So now I click OK. So now you'll see we've got that group item called photography session. So what I can now do is go to the home page Click on invoice, which should always be in your icon bar. So I go view, add to icon bar, there it is. And I'm going to type in Johnson's Landscaping. There in Brizzy, uh, this was done on the 30th. So I go um, to the 30th of the 1st. Um, I come down to quantity and I go to item rather than quantity and I type PHO and there's photo shoot, photo catalog. I go down to photography session tab and it automatically brings those items up. So you'll see we've got the five film and the one photo shoot and it's got the full amount. Now that's great but what if you don't want them to be able to see this invoice? Well, if I go print preview, 
and I go zoom in, you'll notice that it just has the photography session and the full amount, which is what I wanted. But if you do want both to show in the item list, where we went to group, there's a little item here, a little button here that said print items in group. If I had have ticked that, then what would have happened is all the individual items will show up on the invoice. But the idea is if we don't want them to try and work out the individual parts to it, we don't have to. We can actually show it as I, or, or done as I just showed you, where we can preview it as one line, which I think is pretty handy. So now I'm going to go close and I'm going to go save and close. So that's what a group is about. Sorry I'm moving quickly, but as I said, there's still a bit to cover and I don't want to miss out on all the good stuff. Sorry, I'm just double checking how we're going. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about assembly, okay, inventory assembly. Um, so what happens here is I'm going to create a new inventory assembly item called an advertising bundle. And what I do here is I'm in the new area, I'm in the item area, so I go up to new. I'm going to click on the inventory assembly this time. As I mentioned, I'm going to call it an advertising bundle. Uh, I come down and the cost of this, I don't know, but I can create the bill of materials. Cost of goods sold account we use as COGS. Come down here. In goes advertising bundle. Selling price is 390. That's what we sell it for, and we use the GST code and sales. And now I'm down to the items. So I go to film, and as part of this, we use seven units. And we also get the poster board because what we're doing is we also sell you a photo of yourself. Beautiful, really. Uh, if I was making changes, I mean, normally it would be on the day, but as I said, I'm going back to 3016 because I'm doing the dates in January, so I want to make sure I'm well before that date. I go OK. What we'll see is we've got 19 rolls of film. Now, that's because, if you recall, we used in that photographic shoot that were in that, sorry, in that um, photography session, we used five rolls of film. We bought 24, we've used five, we're down to 19. And we've still got the poster board because we haven't used it. And that advertising bundle we've just done, well, it's zero because we haven't built any yet. What I mean by this is if we go to the home page, we will see over to the right, this also came in when we set up inventory, which is build assemblies. So I go in here, I type in advertising bundle, and it brings up automatically how much quantity on hand of bromide and poster board I have. And in fact, if I go over to the far right and two thirds of the way down the page, we'll see it's actually telling me the maximum I can build is 2.71428. But I want to build three and I don't believe in that stuff. So I click on three, go tab, and it tells me I don't have enough componentry to build them, but I can make it pending. So I'm going to click on make pending, okay? which of course means that um, I will be making these. So I'm going to go to the memo and type awaiting arrival of stock. And now what I'm going to do is go build and close. Now what I can do is I can again go to reports, I can go to inventory, and there's actually an inventory report called pending builds. And I go in there, whoop, just opening up a bit more, and you'll see you're waiting arrival of the stock advertising bundle. Now, I can't wait any longer, so what I do is double click on advertising bundle, and it takes me back to that build. I'm actually going to change that three to a one. I'm also going to say remove the pending status, and I'm going to get rid of the memo. And now I can go build and close. So I've built an advertising bundle. You'll see it's out of pending builds. And more importantly, if I go to item list, you'll see we now have one advertising bundle. Seven rolls of film, so we're now down from 19 to 12, and nine poster board because we use a meter of poster board. Okay, so again, it shows what you can do. 
I can now go with reports, go to inventory, inventory valuation summary, and it shows me that I got 12 of fill, nine of poster board and one of the advertising bundle. Here it actually shows me, sorry, the asset value. In other words, what the cost of that inventory is. And over to the right is the retail value. So what the selling price is of that. So in other words, it's gonna cost us 525, but we're gonna sell it for 1,080. Okay. Um, so next, what I'm going to do is do a stock adjustment because we've done a stock take and we found a rule of a roll of film has um, has uh, failed. So I go to suppliers, I go down to inventory activities, adjust quantity value on hand, and this is on the first of Feb. It's, this year, so I go 0102. I go down here. It's going to go to the stock adjustment account. Now we'll notice that there is no stock adjustment account, so when I go tab, it asks me to set it up. It's an expense account, so I just simply save and close, and we're there. The class is Sydney. And I'm down here, and we had 11 rolls because we're throwing one out. So by doing that, what I've effectively done is new quantity 11, it's got minus one on quantity difference. And down here, we can actually put a memo. So here we type in expired film. And now we can go save and close. And we refresh our list and it's automatically gone to 11, the film from 12, because of the fact that we um, had that expired roll. Okay. Now I'm going to show you sales orders. So we're going to go to the home page, but actually I'm going to click on tax invoice up here because Harper's have just asked to buy uh, 12 rolls of film. So I go down here, this is on the 1st of Feb, down to my quantity and I type in 12 and I type in film. Now it comes up and says you don't have sufficient quantity because remember we now have 11 because we just threw one out because it was expired. So what we can do is click OK and it'll ask us if we want to track, etc. But what we can do is um, go across to check. We've got the 660. So I'm just going to click Save and Close. It says credit limit for Harper's is 500. Current balance including this is 1072.50. So am I prepared to let them do it? Now I'm the administrator, so I can actually click yes, and so we can continue. But now it says you've done enough on hand to sell the item, do you want to create a sales order? So I go yes. Brings up the items to show, ordered 12 on hand 11, available to invoice 11 to sales order one. So here I then go okay. And now we're in a sales order. It's to Harper's Music Shop, um, who's going to be buying it. That first of the second, 12 rolls of film, of which one's going to be in back order, and we're invoiced already the 11. So at this stage, I can go, um, sorry, from the, yeah, here, the sales order, I click on the create invoice above. And I can click on purchase order. Here I say create purchase order for all allowed items. We could have done it just on selected. I go OK. And now we're into a purchase order for those 12 rolls of film. So now I can type in graphic. And yep, Sydney, 1st of Feb. And there it is, all ready to go. So now what I can simply do, let me just check. Yep, save and close. Takes me back to the sales order. So now what I do is I go save and close. And I'm waiting for the inventory to turn up. So now we receive the inventory with a bill, which is going to, so that we've received the inventory, but this time with a bill. So I type in graphic. Tells me we've got open purchase orders. I go to the purchase order. I filled it. Let me just check if, I'll, yeah, I filled it on the 4th of Feb. 
Uh, it was GS345. Everything else is there. So I can now go, so you'll see billable, save and close. Now, if I go reports, sales, and open sales orders by customer, there's that sales order. So I double click on that sales order to Harper's. There it is there. You can see back ordered invoice. What I now do is create invoice and I create tax invoice. And it says create for all of the sales order or only for selected. We're going to say all. And you'll see previously invoice 11, one invoiced out of this back order. So it's only $55 or 50 plus GST because 12 were ordered. And now I can go save and close. It reminds me about being over the limit, which I say that's okay. And now we're done. We don't have any sales orders pending. I cannot believe that. I thought I was going to take a little bit longer, as I mentioned, but uh, I seem to be able to get that through. I hope it wasn't too fast. Some areas may have been, but as we mentioned, this is actually recorded, so you can go and see uh, what um, uh, or do the recording to see what I went through. Now I'm just going to check if Vicky's there because this year's will take questions. If not, I'll show you one or two quick tricks before she comes on board. Vicky, are you there? Hello, Vicky. Okay, Hi, as you can see. Hi, Graham. Oh, okay, Vic. Okay, sorry, guys. I thought I was about to be a smartass and say Vicky finds my webinars very boring after hearing them so often, but she's back, so that's great. I am. Hi, Graham. So, um, um, we've not received any questions as yet, so if anyone does have any, please submit them now. Just while uh, Vicky's checking on that, I'm going to come back and I'm just going to remind you of something that's slightly outside of uh, well, outside of today. But remember, edit preferences. If you have not done it, spend time going through these under my preference and then company preference. I have been surprised over time at the amount of people that, um, sorry, things going everywhere. Um, I've been surprised over time at the amount of people that haven't realised what changes they can actually make. And it is very beneficial, even to the extent that I know, and I haven't turned it off, but if I go to general, uh, here we are, beep when recording a transaction. So I could certainly hear the beep when I recorded. I assume you could as well. I could actually click that button and you won't hear the beeping. Okay, Vicky, back to you. Have we got any questions? Yes, I just received one. Um, how? How you receive, have you received any feedback, RE, Reckon Inventory, whether it is easier to use than other software? Okay, fair question. Um, what I'd say is it depends if you're looking at it from a software point of view or what we call an add-on. Uh, so Reckon Accounts, like other software programs, you can actually uh, get add-on products. So if, you're, if you've got an incredibly complex inventory system, multiple warehousing, etc., you're probably going to be looking at products. There's things, Estendo, um, uh, Fishbowl. Uh, I'm just trying to think of a few others that my na the names evade me right at the moment. But you will be using, utilizing one of those products, which actually links in with Reckon Accounts. But from a point of view of Reckon Accounts, and it is my personal uh, belief, but if I look at it across the four main products that I utilise, there is no doubt that I feel the inventory and reckon accounts is the strongest of those. But it does come down to the bottom line that typically, if someone had the perfect CRM package, the perfect inventory package and accounting package all in one, we'd all be using that and that person would be uh, another get Bill Gates, such as in Microsoft. That's not the case. It's typically we find it's brilliant from the accounting side and it's probably not quite as sophisticated at the inventory or the CRM side. But yeah, I'd say, as, I, as I've said, it's my preference out of the four products that I specialise in. 
Vicky, any other questions? Yes, we just got another question. Uh, when dealing in foreign currency and seven co several countries entering in a PO is in foreign currency, how does this work? Burst into tears and leave. Uh, no, it's not quite that bad, but the reality is uh, the foreign currency is um, is tough. I, ha I haven't come across an accounting software program where the foreign currency is extremely easy to use, and that's even with specialised uh, foreign currency uh, FX setups. When I, in a previous role, worked for Volkswagen Group Australia, for example, so dealing with a lot of FX, what I would be saying is. I typically, where possible, uh, work in a dollar. But if you, I don't have foreign currency set up here, where of course it's under the preferences. Um, I have to actually, yep, here, use multi-currency in the home currency, foreign item currencies. Um, it, it works, but it's what I would say clunky. If you can do it in eight dollars, perfect. But if you're actually having to do the PO because it's going to China and has to be in RMB, yes, you can do it. But it also depends on uh, the rate, the spot rates on specific dates, etc. I hope I've answered your question. Uh, if not, by all means, quickly type in now, or you can harass me off camera or after this with some emails, and we can certainly help you to the best we can. Vicky. Thank you, Graham. Um, so this comment is uh, regarding the first question. So what type of businesses would inventory in Reckon Account sue? And what type of clients do you have using Re Reckon Inventory? Okay, I'd say the I'll give an example of the client that's probably the closest to needing what I would call third-party software or, or an add-on ecosystem partner. Lots of lovely buzzwords these days. And this business actually imports medical equipment from China. Now they have one warehouse. If they have more than one warehouse, we'd pose a problem. But we have the one warehouse, the goods come in and the goods get sold predominantly wholesale to hospitals, etc. And we're able to run that uh, without any problem in Reckon Accounts. Another one that's that's being tricky and I've actually sort of tried to push them to a third party software but they haven't wanted to spend the money so they've we have worked on workarounds and still use Reckon Accounts is a business that sells stockyards. So they actually buy the steel in in lengths, they buy the nuts and bolts and brackets and what have you and from there they build their own panels and their own gates and their own crushers out of the effectively the raw materials and we are building uh, assembly items like we saw me doing that build for the advertising bundle but obviously on a far more uh, sophisticated level. I think they could get the benefit by going to a third party product but you're looking when you when you start to look at specialising in inventory basically you're going to be saying you're going to be spending if you if you can do it for ten thousand or less, you've done a good job. So obviously, uh, what you're paying for this software, if you can actually do it within, as they are with a couple of uh, small issues, their argument is that uh, they're still saving money over the year and they're comfortable. They know what they're doing. I hope that's helped you get an understand of sort of to what level of sophistication you can go. If you want specific industries, I can give you a, a um, certainly my interpretation. It would be my interpretation potentially. Vicky, any other questions? Thank you, Graham. Um, no, that's the end of the questions. Okay. Well, as I mentioned, if Sorry, you actually, have, I've just got a, a yep. one comment. So, could I set up a PO in a foreign currency? Uh, the answer is yes. Okay. Okay. Now, anyone, if you've got anything further or you actually want to get a bit more detail of what I said, uh, by all means, you can uh, send an email to training at reckon.com. Uh, 
Is it .com .au or .com, Vicky? .com. Yeah, okay, so training at reckon.com and Vicky or one of the other members of the team will happily get that email through to me so I can assist you with your queries. Sorry, Vicky, you, did you breathe as and you had another question come through? No. Okay. No. Oh, good. So at this stage I'll wrap up. I'll say thank you very much everybody for listening today. I uh, hope it was certainly of some benefit and um, look forward to uh, speaking to you all again soon. Vicky, back to you. Okay, thanks Graeme. Thanks for the presentation and thank you all for attending and we'll see you at the next webinar. Have a lovely day.